All right, people, it is time to talk about your hot takes. My goal here is very simple. My goal is to make Reddit angry at you instead of me. So the next time I open up the Reddit app at night when I'm trying to get sleepy, instead of seeing people raging at me, they will rage against you. But here's the thing. They're just going to shoot the messenger. So even if I disagree with your hot takes, even if I say that every single word out of your mouth is wrong, they will get mad at me anyway. That's exactly right. So I feel like my plan is already backfiring, but you know what? We made it this far, so we're going to do it anyway. We are going to react to some of your hot takes. Uh, I asked you on Twitter for some of them, and uh, let's go through them. And really quickly, I also wanted to mention my Patreon. If you like what I do on YouTube and everywhere else, joining my Patreon really helps me do this full time and worry less about videos getting demonetized by YouTube or copyright claimed by labels. Patrons get all my podcasts and main channel videos videos early. There are members only channels in my discord that I'm super active in. I also do giveaways. For example, I've been giving away a lot of emos, not dead merch, and you can also have me review your music, artwork, or anything else. All you need to do is join my Patreon at the $10 level. And then every month I do a call for submissions. If you want me to review something, just drop it in the comments of that post, and then I will review it live on Twitch. So if any of that sounds cool to you, hit the link in the description of this video, and I appreciate your support. The first one here from uh, Arthur with their new look, Sleep Token have begun their slow transition into their true identity, Mushroom Head. Uh, okay, now if you haven't seen, they debuted their new masks. Let's see them. Here we go. Yes, here it is. This is their new look. For real, these are their new looks. Uh, their new masks. And uh, I gotta say, <laughs> it does look like Mushroom Head. Uh, or maybe like Moto Grader. The guy in the middle looks like kind of an orc. And then I, I like this guy here on the right. He has like, a, it's like a punk jacket, but instead of like having Discharge and GBH and Subhumans logos on it, he's got like their, their runes on there. I don't know what they mean, but, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like the bald orc look. <sighs> I don't know about that. Um, I feel like they may have gone a little bit too far. This is real, yes. I feel like they may have gone a little bit too far. Here's my hope. Number one is I hope that they add a DJ. If they're gonna like do this like 2001 Moto Grader uh, Mushroom Head kind of thing, I think they need to add a DJ. And then they need to take a page out of another great band with masks, which is Hollywood Undead. They need to start rapping about 40s and blowjobs. <laughs> That's what I hope. I hope the next uh, Sleep Token album is full of DJ scratches and bounce riffs on their Ibanez 7 string and they start singing about getting blowjobs from scene girls in the alley behind CVS on Hollywood Boulevard. That's what I think. We'll see. If there is a God in this world, he'll make my dream come true. <laughs> okay, uh, next one we have here from The Comfy Zone. This is a very hot take. Apple Music is actually a better service than Spotify, but the lack of a feature equally comparable to Spotify Wrapped keeps people from switching. Well, I'll tell you what, my friend, this is sort of in the same vein as this one here. From uh, Astronomically Stupid Idiot, this person says Burger King is better than McDonald's. Let me tell you, the reason that people don't switch from Spotify to Apple Music is very simple. I'll explain to you something about the way the world works. In the wild, there is something known as alpha, beta, and omega males. You've seen this, right? Like the pack of wild hyenas. There's the one sort of outcast male that's forced to just eat the scraps that are left over from everyone else. And they won't let him get too close to the pack. And if he comes by any of the female hyenas, they like growl at him and snap at him. And then the big alpha male comes and chases him away. He just has to sort of like whimper alone, like cold on the edge of the pack and hope that he can subsist on the scraps, the cuck hyena, yes. You know how that works? That hyena on the edge of the pack that has to eat scraps that can't get near any of the females, that hyena is the one that uses Apple Music. That hyena is the one that eats at Burger King instead of McDonald's. That's the reason why nobody wants to use Apple Music instead of Spotify. This is the person that's the poster child for second place, right? I've talked about this person before. The person that drinks Pepsi instead of Coke, the person that plays Xbox instead of PlayStation, the person that wears Adidas, <laughs> ironically, the person that wears Adidas instead of Nike, or maybe even worse, Reebok, the person that eats at Burger King instead of McDonald's, that's this person. And nobody wants to be that guy because this guy will be condemned to being 
the beta male on the edge of the pack the whole time. Now it could be worse. You could be the guy that uses Amazon music or Deezer. Using Amazon music or Deezer, that's the equivalent of wearing like Reebok or Puma, drinking RC Cola and eating at Jack in the Box. <laughs> It could be much worse. So my advice, the comfy zone, my advice is uh, immediately switch right now. When you watch this video, I want you to drop whatever you're doing, cancel your Apple Music subscription, join Spotify, and instantly you will find yourself surrounded by beautiful women that want to have sex with you. You will send me a DM and you'll say, Finn, thank you so much for putting me on the right track. I was lost. I was doomed to be a, an Omega male. You saved me. Thank you, Finn. Thank you. And I would say, hey, you're welcome, man. You're welcome. Here's an interesting one from Thomas Hines. It's not the musician nerds making metal unpopular. If you ask anyone who listens to rock and pop music why they don't like metal, they will tell you it's the screaming. They never complain about guitar solos. You know, I, th I think this is a fair point. This is a fair point. Let's look at an example of what he's talking about. You're telling me that normal people don't want to listen to this? You're telling me they don't want to listen to this? Fondle the foreskin, what? You're telling me that normal people don't want to listen to a band called Infant Annihilator making animal noises talking about foreskins? What? <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> I thought everybody told me how great this band was. Screaming is the metal equivalent of bagpipes. Now, it, it's true, but I don't think I don't think these two things are mutually exclusive, right? Because here is the issue with metal. I've talked about this before, but here's the issue with metal. The reason why metal isn't popular is because metal bands don't want to do the things that make it popular, right? Like obviously normal people don't care about guitar solos. Normal people don't care about screaming. Normal people don't care about breakdowns. Normal people want something catchy and accessible that they could listen to, right? Like if you think back to when metal was at its peak, which would be the new metal era, these bands all had super catchy choruses that you could sing along to, right? Like Linkin Park was the biggest band for a reason because it's very accessible stuff. And they had a little bit of screaming here and there, but Linkin Park was a very accessible band that anybody could sing along to. Like the example I always use, my 40 year old sister from Vietnam who doesn't even listen to music. <laughs> she probably hasn't listened to music in years. Even she likes Linkin Park because you can sing along to that stuff. He's trying to isolate the guitar Guitarist is the problem, but it's the atmosphere with the guitarists that keep women away. That's what it is. That's what it is. Metal bands don't want to be popular, which is fine. It's mostly the audience that's weird about this sort of thing. When you've got the metal audience both complaining that metal isn't popular and gatekeeping the shit out of anything that is on the verge of becoming maybe popular. This is what it is. And if you don't care about metal being popular, that's fine. I don't think metal needs to be popular either. Explain the Marilyn Manson mainstream phenomena because he made fucking great songs and he's a super charismatic guy. That's the reason why. It's very simple. Yeah, Marilyn Manson, like beautiful people and stuff. Those are great songs, super catchy songs. It's not hard to understand. He made people pay attention to him. Yeah, I mean, of course, but nobody does that now, right? The point is like, I understand what he's saying. He's right in the sense of probably screaming is more of a turnoff. I think he's right about that, but it's all of that stuff. This is the problem is that like, it's all of this stuff is that metal bands consciously reject all of the things that might make you popular and then also complain that metal isn't popular, right? And so this is the problem. Pick one. If you don't care about being popular, that's fine. Then don't be popular. But if you want to be popular, well, then you're going to need to do some things that would, you know, lead to more people listening to music. That's what it is. Speaking of new metal, Phil Coltard says new metal was the peak of metal. I don't think this is very much of a hot take. This is just an objective fact. And I want to talk about this. A lot of people seem to argue with me on this. When I say that metal is not as popular as it used to be, people always get angry with me and tell me I'm wrong and try to somehow tell me that metal is more popular now than it ever was. This is not true. New metal was the peak of metal's popularity Hands down, no question. Possibly the hair metal era. Let me put it this way. New metal is the most recent peak of metal's popularity. You're right. Hair metal was bigger than new metal. You're right. But new metal was the most recent peak of metal's popularity. And I want to just talk about this for a minute because it has occurred to me, something very unfortunate occurred to me, which is that a lot of people who listen to metal now may be too young to remember the TRL era. Okay, because if you're 23 now, you're actually too young to really remember 
how popular new metal was. To give you an idea of how popular this stuff was back in the day, at one point, Fred Durst was on the cover of Us Weekly for supposedly dating, and this is in 2003, for supposedly dating Britney Spears, okay? This is like the most popular celebrity gossip magazine in the country, Britney Spears, the biggest pop star on the planet, and Fred Durst is on the cover of this magazine. That's how popular this stuff was. For anybody who doesn't know, TRL was MTV's daily video countdown show, which was basically like the most popular thing in youth culture at the time. You would come home every day after school and go watch videos on TRL, and it would always be like Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, whatever, would be like in the top spot, and Korn would always get the third spot. That's right, they called it the corn spot. A lot of the pop punk bands were on there too, like Blink-182, Good Charlotte, New Found Glory, all of that stuff. This shit was huge. And so the fact that like, you know, corn was losing to Britney Spears and Backstreet Boys, like it is difficult for me to like overemphasize how important and like how mainstream this shit was. And there's nothing like that metal. There's nothing like that with metal now. Okay. I think it's awesome that Sleep Token are selling out arenas. That's great. I think it's awesome that, you know, bands like Bad Omens are blowing up on TikTok. That's great. And like respect to them. I'm not discounting that. But the idea that Sleep Token is anywhere near as big or as relevant as Corn or Linkin Park or Limp Biscuit was at their prime is just, it's crazy talk. It's just not true. Another example of this, look at this. Hybrid Theory is one of the top 50 best-selling albums of all time, okay? Of all time. Up there with Pink Floyd, Bob Marley, Bruce Springsteen, you know, Boys to Men, Led Zeppelin. Like, that's how popular Linkin Park was. Just absolutely gigantic. And not by the standards of metal. By the standards of all music. That's my point. And so, listen. Respect to Sleep Token and Bad Omens and all those bands doing well on TikTok and selling out shows. Like, good for them. I genuinely think that's awesome. But the idea that they are anywhere near as popular as New Metal was at its peak is just not true. And I don't know if people are too young to remember that or they don't want to believe it. I don't know. At first, I was going to say that I agree with this opinion that new metal was the peak of metal from a commercial perspective, but hair metal probably actually was bigger than new metal, like Poison and Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses, all that stuff. That probably was bigger than new metal. But the fact that it's even close to me tells you something. I would say new metal is the peak of metal as we could like hair metal is kind of, I don't know. They call it metal, but is it really metal? I don't think so. What about 2010 scene metalcore? That stuff was big too. But I mean, nothing like, dude, this new metal shit was so big, so big and still super influential. That's the other thing is like all these bands are still so influenced by new metal, right? So it's the popularity of new metal, but it's also the musical influence of new metal. Like nobody's really influenced by hair metal now, right? Maybe maybe like a little bit here and there, like maybe Guns N' Roses, but hair metal doesn't have the same kind of legacy as new metal does. So I'm inclined to agree with this one. I think Phil is right. New metal was indeed the peak of metal. And uh, listen, with all due respect to Sleep Token and Bad Omens and everyone else, still a very, very, very long way from uh, being as popular as new metal was. Okay, Derek Flores says, the emo industrial complex and TikTokification of metal is making conservatism and traditionalism the modern counterculture. Therefore, the best way to rebel today is to just exist as a run-of-the-mill type Joe. Now this I can completely agree with. I feel like these days, let's see here. Let's see if I can find a good example of this. <laughs> Here's a good example of it. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with this uh, in the sense that um, being a normie is the new alternative, essentially, is the point of this. Like, think about this. What is more shocking in the year of 2023? Having a bunch of face tattoos and colored hair and, you know, being poly and fucking whatever else, like layering on as many different like subcultural identities uh, as you possibly can and positioning yourself as the person that rebels against 
mainstream culture as much as possible. Which of these two things is more controversial? Being that person, the polyamorous TikToker with 18 piercings and face tattoos and green hair, or being a normal guy that has a nine to five job and drives a Toyota Camry, has two kids and goes to church on Sunday, but kind of doesn't really believe in it that much, but he just goes because he's been going all his life and never, never really even thought to ask, like, should I keep going to church even though I don't believe in it? <laughs> Which of those two things is more shocking in the current year? That's my question. Yeah, I forget who said it, but tattoos used to scare the squares. Now the squares have tattoos. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right. That's why I think if you want to offend and shock people, be normal. That's what I think. Shock and offend uh, people by being normal. That's what I think. Okay, next one from Not Critical. If the name of the anime is so long, it could be a Fall Out Boy song title. It's Virgin Otaku Trash. This is one that I found interesting. I don't pay attention to anime or manga anymore, but my wife and I go to Barnes & Noble a lot to get coffee, and we always walk past the manga section, and I've noticed this. A lot of these have really wacky titles the golden word master the four heroes and the innocent bystander with a unique cheat that's pretty good this is an example of what he's talking about here how did not use healing magic recovery team running through the battlefield that's the name of a manga reincarnated as an aristocrat with an appraisal skill could be a fallout boy song right it could be survival story of a sword king in a fantasy world reincarnated as a dragon hatchling they could easily be Fall Out Boy song titles. And uh, listen, I don't know much about manga these days, or actually, as I should say, uh, manga. I want to start calling it manga from now on, just to offend weeaboos. So do you guys read mangas? Yeah, I love animes and mangas. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. All my favorite mangas at Barnes & Noble. But the, the, I think there's a mistake. They printed it backwards. This manga is printed backwards. Can I get a refund? That's what I think. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But here's the twist. Here's the twist. He's wrong because all anime is virgin otaku trash. I'm sorry, all animes, all animes are virgin otaku trash. That's the truth. That's the truth. They need to start rapping about 40s and blowjobs. 